Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel. Now, I've thought long and hard about making this video because I don't want to give this organisation I'm going to be talking about any more publicity or attention than they deserve, and they deserve very little. However, they do pop up every now and again with various articles, and I think it's incredibly important as a community for us to combat the misinformation and the lies that are being spread by organisations like this and to really balance the scales, to give a more accurate depiction of what shooting sports and firearm ownership is, is really about, rather than leading it to people that are obviously on a blind vendetta, regardless of logic, fact or reason, into banning all guns and stopping shooting sports completely. So the Gun Control Network is every UK gun owner's favourite organisation. It's popped up with a recent article off of the back of the Canadian and New Zealand shooting. Trust them to never let a good mass shooting go to waste when you have a political agenda to impose on people. Now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of the article in a minute, but just to lead you on the opening line of this article, semi-automatic shotguns and rifles known as mass casualty weapons are surprisingly still legal in the UK while they're referring to semi-automatic shotguns and 2-2 semi-automatic rifles. However, a bit of backstory, the Gun Control Network was founded in July 1996, founded by somebody called Jill Marshall Andrews, who was the wife of a Labour MP at the time, Bob Marshall Andrews. Of course, there's absolutely no way that her or her husband would benefit from a political move into gun control. Now, this really boils down to one fanatical woman who is hell-bent and has a personal vendetta against guns. If you want a safer society with lower gun violence, then you've got to reduce your gun ownership. None of the people that are, have formed the gun control network or have any sort of expertise in firearm or firearms laws. They might state that they have lawyers on there, they might state that they have academics on there. Doesn't mean that they're necessarily clued up in the field of shooting sports, in the, sh the field of firearms ownership. This is highlighted by a news article in The Telegraph on the 18th of July 2001. Since two years after the handgun ban was implemented, the incidence of handgun crime has increased by 40%. And even The Telegraph go on to say, if she were to work back, she being Jill, to 1927, she would discover that each time legislation has been introduced, to restrict sh sport shooting, the level of crime has increased. If you want a safer society with lower gun violence, then you've got to reduce your gun ownership. Now that is the only fact, logic and reason that you really need to look at. Every time new legislation has come in restricting shooting sports, gun crime has risen. So if your objective, if, if your mission is to reduce gun crime and to make people safer, you wouldn't go and do the thing that has been proven time and time again from 1927 to increase crime and increase danger to the public. She has one goal in her mind and that is to remove all private ownership of guns within the UK and ride the political train while she can do it. It's easy to see how the attention and publicity of forming an organisation like this and riding on a, a public bandwagon of banning guns was going to benefit them both in the political careers. Handgun crime still makes up over 40% of all firearm offences within the UK and it is a gun that is otherwise banned. So how can banning in any way, shape or form be shown to work when still the largest single majority of crime is made up with a banned firearm? So let's go a little deeper into the website and they have this lovely interactive incident map. And when you start to boil that down, it just becomes laughable. So you load it up and there are hundreds if not thousands of these red dots and it's going to give you the instant impression oh my god the uk is a hot spot for gun crime everyone's going to get scared they're going to get worried that all of this crime is going on all around them and they had no idea it's 
as reported by the British media. Wait, they haven't gone to the Home Office, they haven't gone to the police, the people that are required by law to keep up to date and accurate records on all of these instances. No, they've gone to the media and we all know how accurate and truthful the media can be when it comes to reporting on gun instances. These could quite simply all be a child being spotted with a BB gun. But what they are going to lead you to believe is these are all murders. These are all people that have been killed or hurt with guns. And again, there's no context. There's no explanation. What they are trying to do is install fear to make you emotional and to make you scared. So after the Canadian and New Zealand attacks, just like Sean O'Neill did with the, the Times article. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll, I'll put a link in one of the corners for you to go and go and watch it but they're riding off that bandwagon. They've seen these black, scary looking, military styled firearms are illegal in, are legal in the UK, and that really does turn their stomach. And using, again, words like mass casualty weapons, I've never heard of that phrase. I've never heard of these guns ever being referred to or known as mass casualty weapons. So they've obviously stepped up from assault rifle, they've obviously stepped up from high capacity magazines and ghost guns and they've, they've started to get a little bit more adventurous in order to install fear and panic into people. Again, you go around telling people that mass casualty weapons are available in the UK and ask them whether they think they should be banned, you can see where that's going to go. Instead, what these firearms actually are, are semi-automatic shotguns and 2-2 semi-automatic rifles. How a 2-2 semi-automatic rifle could ever be considered a, uh, a mass casualty weapon, I do not know. But they've completely missed the mark. They've gone on the same tangent, so they can't even come up with an original idea when it comes to attacking these guns. They've gone for the same angle as Sean O'Neill at the Times, which is that the UK PSA and practical shooting sports is just a massive loophole for us to be able to own these guns. We shouldn't own these guns. We've created this sport, this facade sport, to be able to, to own them and justify them, and therefore they should be banned. Not forgetting that semi-automatic shotguns are used in wild fowling, they, they're used in hunting, they're used in clay pigeon shooting, they're used in a variety of different quite valid reasons other than practical shooting. And yet again, despite there not being a box-fed semi-automatic shotgun used in any of those shootings, they've gone after a box-fed semi-automatic shotgun just like Sean O'Neill did, this time the Hatsan Escort Raider because they look more scary, because they look more sinister, because they're black and tactical looking, they're going to get their message across and fear across even better. And then 2-2 semi-automatic rifles. Yes, they are used in practical shooting, but they were used in a variety of different disciplines long before they were used in mini rifle, gallery shooting and target competitions, just to name a couple. Again, they're trying to say that we shouldn't own these guns because they are a complete loophole. And that's, for me, really the thing that annoys me the most. The article is signed off by Peter Squires saying, given the potential risk that such weapons in the wrong hands would represent, and given the terrorist and security concerns, we need to close the mass casualty firearm loophole before we are shocked into it by another tragedy of our own what loophole it is the law and not forgetting that the ipsc the international practical shooting confederation which the uk psa is the uk franchise of has just received observer status from the olympic committee you don't really get more official within sports than the olympics and the practical shooting is very much on its way to the Olympics. This is not some thought up, made up sport just so that we can own these guns. This has been going on for a very, very long time, run to a very high standard, and is now being seriously considered by the Olympics. Those are the facts. For me, what this all boils down to is that guns are once again an easy, lazy argument for brain dead people that just want to install fear rather than actually going and doing their research and understanding what the real issues are here. If Jill really wants to do positive things for you know, the UK and make it a safer place, she should stop wasting this 
facade of an organization's time on targeting the legal gun owners and what we can own and going after the people that are actually responsible for the crime. I understand that they are upset that they're losing their sport. I understand that. It is the price that has to be paid for living in a safer society. She's absolutely belligerent in her thoughts and has already had her mind made up, unwilling to look at any alternative or entertain any fact-based argument. But there we go, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. And as always, guys, I hope to see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.